Well, now we move to our Android basic section. And we have what I think is probably one of the most feature-packed talkback updates we've had for quite a while. They've called it Talkback 13.1. I, I almost wonder whether they could have got away with a 13.5 for this, because there's a fair amount in it. Um, uh, we'll all because have... Samsung already took 13.5. So... <laughs> this is true. This is true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's very true. Uh, they, they have major point upgrades and they've done very little. So Google, Google is reversing that and having much uh, more incremental ones, and they've done more. Uh, I'm sure we'll all have views on this. But uh, Gary, what are your thoughts on 13.1? Uh, it's better than before. It's responsive than before. There's a lot of features that 13, I don't know, from my point of view, 13 to me was a minor um, upgrade than this 13.1. Yeah, that was my thought as well, and that, that's why I thought they could have got a bit bigger. check, you had actions, you have uh, split tap, uh, you have a lot of Braille stuff. Um, yeah, I think... Well, there's just a couple of other things that's escaping me at the moment. The, the way the Google's of. doing it now is they're trying to stay in sync with the operating system, so whether it's a big upgrade or not, whatever they release like over the summer or fall, they're just going to jump to the next number so that like they have Talkback 13 aligned with uh, Android 13. At least that's how I feel. It seems like that's what they're doing. So I don't think it matters to them how much has improved, whether they, they're they only going to call it a point release until the next year in the fall, then they're going to jump to the next number. Yeah. The, the strange thing about that, though, is obviously it's not it's not dependent entirely anywhere on having Android 13. So some of the features are, but... You know, it'll run on Android 12, 11. And John, and... John is correct. It, be, prior to we going to, you know, talk back 12, 11, whatever it was, um, we had just like, you know, and then they aligned it to the Android versions. So, so um, that is why now it's just basically whatever the Android version is, it just aligns to that. So I know it's, it's more yeah. confusion this way, but I don't know. Yeah. That's there. Because it's not. You don't need Android 13 to run Talkback 13. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what yeah. confuses somebody. It would be much better if they just do a year, like you know, Talkback 2023 or Talkback 2027, whatever the year would be. It'd be much yeah. much. That'll be less confusing for somebody. Or or just uh, have it say that Talkback has an independent version number to Android. Exactly. Like Play, Store, Play Store does, or any other Google app does. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't complaining about it when that's how they did it. <laughs> I don't know why it changed. I want to ask about this spell checker thing because to me, a spell checker doesn't really sound like a talkback feature. So, is it just that talkback will um, so... speak what's in the spell checker now, rather than uh... that the spell checker is actually a talkback thing? Because no, I'm guessing it's, sighted it's a, people have a spell checker as well, do they not? It's a feature, but what happens is, you know, you have Gboard or do your auto-correcting and all that, but, I mean, you can sometimes Gboard or your vo voice detection may not get it correctly, and then you can go through your document either using character granularity or word granularity, and you can, you know, a, a spell check. And, you know, and it'll give you, like, in actions, it'll give you, like, how you would have a bunch of, missed, you know, words and you can pick the word that you think is correct. And the way they've done it is that, that there are two uh, things that have been added to the reading controls or granularity. So uh, there, there's a spell check. And what that will do when you swipe up and down, having selected it, is it will cycle you to the next spelling error. And then if you go to, I think it's it's actions, isn't it? You yes. will have a choice of you will have a choice of uh, suggestions that you can you can select. Uh, it seems to be for reasons not entirely clear that you have to be at the top of the document for the spell checker to work optimally. Uh, I don't know either. Yeah, but it, you know that's what I've noticed, and that's been my experience. I just it doesn't make any sense to me either. Like if you're typing a document or you're typing an email and you have like a bunch of things that you know Gboard did incorrect or you know your voice dictation did incorrect. Uh, it, it, I find it a little tedious. I would, I would hope that they refine it. That you know, wherever you are in the document, you could have, you know, as you're saying, go through the actions, use a spell check up and 
a down swipe and then, or you have some type of indication and you could just, you know, to go through your actions. And if there's a word that you, you know, that Gboard didn't catch or your voice dictation didn't catch, you have the options there. You just pick whatever the option is and go on your, you know, your, your business. Yeah. You should just that cycle sounds... it into, you shouldn't be at the top. It should just wrap. No, no. Yeah. yeah. That sounds to me like TalkBack has made a spell check that Google's already done accessible, though, rather than that the spell check itself is a TalkBack feature. Yeah, I think it's a great. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so you set your granularity or your reading control to spell check. Yeah. And then it will move. So whatever is marked, of course, we can't see it visibly marked, but whatever is marked. That's what I mean. I I think those things have been marked probably for ages. Yeah. But, but we now just haven't had of... access to it. So I, d- I don't think it's quite correct necessarily to say the spell check itself is a talkback feature. I would I would have thought it was probably more it accurate be, to say... It could be vice versa. I don't know. When you use Gboard and you have the uh, predictive typing or, you know, whatever, it, it guesses the word that you are trying to type, uh, that is not the same thing necessarily like the spell checker. So, for instance, if I miss anything in Google uh, while I'm typing with my Gboard, rather, I keep saying Google, and I'm done with that document, I can't go back to it and find it without reading that document and come across a word that doesn't sound right or doesn't, uh, if I'm using my Braille display or whatever, I see the misspelled word. But with this spell checker, I should be able to Hey, spell check this document for me. So definitely, it's 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 different, even though it's somehow tied to that, but it's not necessarily the same thing. Another of the big changes in thirteen point one is that uh, talkback actions are uh, much more readily available. So previously, you either had to go into the talkback menu and select actions, or you could assign a gesture uh, to actions. Now, actions will be in your reading controls by default. And where actions are kind of available, like on your home screen, if your launcher supports them, or in other instances, your reading control, I think, will default to actions. So if you're on a notification, you can now just swipe up and dismiss it or do whatever you, you'll be on actions a little bit a little bit like uh those who've used ios previously uh might experience so pulling actions out and making them a little bit more available than they previously were i suspect is a, a productivity enhancement that might help quite a lot of folks you made a very important um statement there Ed, because in reality if like for for example uh, prior to now, I had my I had a gesture dedicated for actions, and now with this, I should now um, use that gesture for w- what it was intended for. For example, for mine, I chose the uh, left right swipe for my actions, and so now I could move that thing back to where it used to be instead of uh, using it for actions. So I think it's a good feature to have it there as um, part of the default granularities and it makes things easier for people to say, you're on a home screen, you want to move an icon uh, to another icon, I mean, another uh, home screen or you want to uninstall the app or you want to remove the icon from your home screen. That makes the process a little bit easier if you uh, simply just change the granularity to actions, and then you have all the uh, things that you can do. So I really like that feature, um, making it easier for people to use uh, TalkBack, and uh, kudos to you guys for doing that. So it's in the granularity now, is it, when you're, like with words and characters and stuff, actions is in that uh, thing. Oh, brilliant. That would be great. Yeah, so it, it that's what makes it beautiful. And uh, you don't necessarily have to go to put it in, see, like words and characters. You actually need to go in and do that. If you if you don't specifically say, hey, I want my characters to be part of the granularity, they're not going to be in there. Uh, but this one comes by default, and that's what makes it even uh, prettier. Prettier as a that's picture, good. right? Mm. 
Yeah. So tell Samsung to bump you up to version 14 because it seems like uh, it will take <laughs> version 14 on Samsung to get it. Samsung, if you are listening to the Blind Android Users podcast, please, let's be on the same page, shall we? Or you can go and listen to John Dyer's excellent demonstration on our YouTube channel of how to get Google Talkback on your Samsung device. Yeah, I did. It sounded a bit complicated. <laughs> ah, well, it's, it's there for those of you who are feeling adventurous and want to try it. Worth talking about some Braille improvements in 13.1. Obviously, you have the current issue where uh, Bluetooth on Android means that you can't uh, have a Braille display that uses a human interface device driver such as HumanWare NLS over Bluetooth. But you can now uh, connect those devices via USB. So perhaps not optimal, but until the Android Bluetooth issue is fixed, you can at least use those devices now uh, via USB should you so choose, which I guess is better than nothing. Would you need a um, an adapter, though, presumably, wouldn't you, to do that? No, just a cable. Yeah, but they come with a... The Braille displays usually come with USB at one end and, I don't know, USB-C or micro-USB at the other end. Yeah, you don't need a dongle, though. I would probably buy a cable rather than an adapter, just for ease. So you could I'd... just have USB-C at both ends, for example. Yeah, I would yeah, do that. I see. Yeah, I would. You, I mean, you can. You absolutely can. You can. You can buy an app, but I wouldn't. I'd buy a separate cable, just because. Yeah, and sometimes it's most, a lot of phones come with an adapter. I know Pixels come with an adapter. Yeah, mine didn't, but I mean, I don't. I have a good Bluetooth Braille display anyway, so I don't care. But yeah. The other Braille improvement we're talking about, albeit I do think this is half-baked, is we have many, many more languages in the uh, TalkBack Braille keyboard now. This includes more English uh, uh, Braille tables. So we have UK, US, English, and a whole load of new languages, including, I think slightly bizarrely, but very good, Ancient Greek, if Ancient Greek is your thing. Uh, wow. You can now use that on the TalkBack Braille keyboard. The reason, the reason I say it's half-baked, though, is that for all of the Braille tables, not just English ones, I looked at some other languages, I don't think there are any grade two options aside from uh, unified English Braille, which is a bit of a shame because the tables exist. Uh, it, but, you know, at least if, if, if unified English Braille is not your thing and you're prepared to type in grade one, then uh, th those tables exist too, and maybe they're grade two uh, uh, siblings or betters uh, will be added. But if it's grade two you want, then you're stuck on uh, useless English Braille still for a while. I don't mind you, EB. Have they fixed the really annoying thing now when you have a Braille display connected and it pops up with this, an external Braille keyboard is connected. If you want to change to the talkback Braille, you know, the Braille on screen keyboard or whatever it is. And I'm like, why would I want to do that when I've got an external Braille keyboard? Stop. Don't do that. That's annoying. Have they stopped doing that? I haven't checked. I don't, I don't know. If that would make me very happy because it's very irritating. And I also want to just be able to use my Braille display um, and swap between, say, that and... Um, say a bluetooth keyboard or something without all the stupid oh you need to change input devices oh come on it's 2023 guys i think and, uh, you'd always have to change input devices for that though i can't well, you never can't. you don't you never do when you connect the braille the bluetooth keyboard it just works yeah but you want to switch between the two when they're both connected at once don't you no i just want one or the other and if I've been using the Bluetooth keyboard and then I go back to the Braille, it'll say, in order to type in Braille, you have to change input device. <laughs> Why? Even that when the Bluetooth keyboard, is that because you've got the pixel set as the default, though? No, the Bluetooth keyboard's turned off. Yeah, but what's your default keyboard? It's well, it has to be Braille to use the Braille display, but I don't want to have to, I don't want to be restricted like that. I want it to just 
what, no, there's what no I... Braille display, so we'll show the Google keyboard. There is a Braille display, right? We'll let you type with that. There is a Bluetooth keyboard, right? We'll let you type with that. I don't want to have to keep changing my default keyboard. That's very tedious. I don't think you should have to. I think if one of, I think I think it might depend on what order you have your keyboard set and which ones are default. I don't think it ought to be that complicated. I have to say, I know you don't like Apple on here, but on my iPhone, I can use Bluetooth, I can use Braille, or I can use the keyboard on the phone. And I am never, ever asked to set anything. It just works. And I wish Android would do that. No. Because it works. I, I don't need, I don't want to have to, you know, it should just go, oh, this is Braille now. Hello and work. You know, Google can do all sorts of things with the assistant and everything. Come on, Google, sort it out, please. I think if you set one of those hardware keyboards as your default and order them, that might not happen. But but I don't want to have favorite. to set anything. No, Why should I have it, to? If you do set it, it might fix it. Yeah, what we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, yeah. You know, like we say, everything is a work in progress. And uh, who is to say yes, that some, would some not happen? Yes, some of it's happen? more of a work in progress than others. It depends what you want, though. But Apple is fairly limited <laughs> on the on-screen keyboards you can use. So. That's true. That's true. Yeah. But if, if you're just so, using the defaults and you've never mucked about with anything else, which I haven't, it should just work. Braille shouldn't yeah. be so irritating, and as soon as you connect Braille, it sort of has a bit of a panic. Oh, oh, oh! This is a different one. Oh no! Like just, just work. I mean, it shouldn't flash up your flash message, but I, th I think reordering your keyboards will solve that issue. So, what should the first one be then? The Braille one, probably, and then the Bluetooth one. Uh, make I sure. Don't, I don't. Yeah, but I don't even have to set the Bluetooth one as an input. That's not even on the list. There isn't even oh, right. a Bluetooth. No, no, so that's, that's what that's I'm saying. Yeah. So the okay, Braille so, one. So in that case, set, set, the as, set the Braille one as set the Braille one as a default. No, okay. Yeah. The problem is until, got, until the Braille display isn't connected, and then it'll go. You haven't got a Braille display connected, and then it'll want me to type Braille on the screen, and I don't like it. No, ah. it won't. It won't do that because then it will have the physical. It keyboard. does. It says things like dot five and stuff. It's very irritating. Well, that's because you've got the talkback Braille keyboard on as well. So yeah, because it says I have to in order to use the Braille display. Well, if you if you've got the Bluetooth connected though, you say that's identified as a physical keyboard anyway. So. Not with yeah. the Braille display, not with the so, Braille display, yeah, only it, with like the QWERTY said, one. This is something that, I mean, like, even if I connect my Bluetooth uh, keyboard, you know, I have that thing in the notification that says configure, you know, uh, a keyboard. Uh, Are you talking one. about Braille keyboard now? No, or I'm saying even one? if a regular Bluetooth keyboard, for example, like I have my Logitech sitting here or my whatever, if Your I desk. pair it to my phone, I have that thing in the notification that says configure keyboard. I don't. Yeah, it, uh, no, it does. It always shows up there. Yeah, but it doesn't come Bluetooth, up on the main uh, screen like there. it does if you connect to Braille display. And it doesn't not let you type with the bluetooth keyboard like it doesn't let you type on braille until it says in order to use this braille display as a keyboard you have to change to talk back braille keyboard oh it's yeah annoying. because because fee the the, the talk back the uh, display is not it's not a physical input in the sense of a physical keyboard is it's, it's it a is. multi no uh, hear me out on this one let me try to explain the Bluetooth keyboard that I connect to my uh, phone, that's all it does. It has no other functionality besides just being a keyboard. Right, While yeah. the, the Braille display, however, it's not just a, a, an input method. It has other functions as well. So yeah, I can see why the output, that is. The output works, though. The output just works. So I don't see why the input shouldn't, really. Once you've set it up for the first time, I think it should just work. And if TalkBack would would uh, improve that, I would be a very, very happy, 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 happy user. So please, if you're listening, Google, please make it easier and fix it. And don't make me have to change that every time I use Braille again. Speaking of typing, uh, they also introduced split tap typing for 
those of you who know what that is, uh, it's, uh, it's another thing they kind of took from iOS, where if you want to tap with the on-screen keyboard, the regular QWERTY keyboard on screen, you can move one finger around on the keyboard and use a second finger to type the letter by just tapping once. So that's now an option. So with the second finger, can you tap anywhere? Yes. So it's like, say if I want to write Fiona, my name, mm -hmm. I would press F and then with the other hand, I would just tap somewhere to say, yes, I meant F. Yeah. And then I, yes, I meant I and so on. Yeah. So you would just slide your thumb around. So if you're holding the phone like in your right hand, you could just slide your thumb around to the keys you want to press and tap like your left finger on the screen to input whatever your right thumb is currently on. Okay. All right. Interesting. It's not something yeah, I've ever used, but... Yeah, I don't use it for typing, but what I ha have found it very convenient for is deleting characters because I could just put my thumb on the delete and then just like really fast, like if I know already know I want to delete five characters, I can just tap five times really fast with my other finger. So that's definitely where I've been using it You mean it the instead most. of having to go double tap, double tap, double tap, double tap? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that would be quite handy. You will need Android 13 for that, though. It won't work on Android 12 or below. Yep. Uh, something else worth talking about, uh, I think, anyway, I think it's quite helpful. Uh, before, you weren't able to assign a gesture to uh, show or hide the screen. It was in the talkback menu, but for some reason it wasn't something you could assign a gesture to. You now can. So if you want to uh, turn on a screen shade, hide the screen or whatever, you, you can assign a gesture to that. There isn't one by default, but if you go into talkback settings, customize gestures, that's uh, something you can do as well, which I think is quite good. Yeah, yeah that I like annoyed that. me for ages, not being able to turn on the screen shade. So yeah, they also... Good took away which has bothered me forever i've hated this every time you hide the screen it used to put a message on screen telling you like basically instructions for a sighted user how to unhide the screen like open the talk back menu select show screen and it just bothered me that like why when i'm hiding the screen are you so like content on like showing a message to a sighted person to let them know how they can unhide the screen and it I was like i think the reason is that is annoying but I think the reason for it is because loads of the time when you search for how to do anything with TalkBack, mm -hmm. the main results are, how do you turn off TalkBack? I'm stuck in accessibility. I'm, you know, and those yeah. results come up first, which is really annoying when you're actually blind yeah, and you I actually <laughs> want to use it. And I've had fun... <sighs> frustration with the watch this week because so many of the results are to do with how annoying accessibility is mm -hmm. which it really isn't it's actually awesome yeah but it, it's just like how many people are going to accidentally turn on talkback and accidentally hide the screen like there is a pop-up that says you're about to hide your screen and it tells you how to unhide it and then you yeah, check don't show annoying. me this again and even if you check, don't show me this again, it used to literally every time you hide the screen or every time you reboot your phone or every time you turn talk back off and back on again, that message would come up and stay on the screen for three minutes. So like if you're in a situation where you just want to hide your screen and have it go dark, like that yeah. wouldn't, that wasn't possible. It would still be lit up and it would still have a message on your screen for three minutes. So I'm so glad they finally three got minutes. rid of that. Wow. Yeah. Yep. That is annoying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anything else from 13.1? I've noticed some fixes. So uh, it's come up in the Telegram group a lot, but there was this bug where if you tap with two fingers to stop speech, from that point on, TalkBack would only read up until the first line break of an item. And you would either have to turn TalkBack off and back on again to get it back to working, or you'd have to tap again with two fingers to have it finish reading whatever you had paused. And that bug is thankfully gone because that, that bothered a lot of people. I mean, it wasn't just t in Telegram. It happened in a lot of apps, but it was mainly noticed in Telegram because if you were in a group, it would only read the name of the person and not their actual message. And you would be like, what's going on here? So they fixed that bug. And they also fixed the um, assistant typing on Pixel phones. I, I have been complaining about it for a year. 
um, it always would bark suggestions at you and then it wouldn't hear whatever you were saying while the suggestions were. Yeah. So it would, that's fixed. It just stays completely silent now and works perfectly as it should. So I'm very happy about that improvement. So are you saying that's only on the pixel that happens or is that, is it just that that, you've only tried it on a pixel so far? That bug was only affected pixels and now that's fixed on pixels. However, I, I did want to bring up, I have noticed, and let me know if anybody else has noticed this, an, a new bug that they've introduced with, when using voice typing on Gboard. Now, this doesn't apply to Pixel devices using voice typing. So, I mean, assistant typing, so no Pixel 6 or 7 series devices. But older Pixels and other phones that are not Pixels, if you are in Gboard and you double tap on the voice input button, the focus moves to either the letter T or the number five, depending on you, whether you have a number row showing or not. And so if your normal way of ending dictation is to double tap again, thinking the focus is still on the microphone, now it's going to put a letter T or a number five at the end of your message. So that's, that's annoying. Yeah, it's a, it's, I'm kind of, I can't believe they missed something like that, but yeah, it's that there. So me and John, you know, we're experimenting back and forth and, some sometimes I would notice it, but you know, then when he, and he told me the way he was doing it, then I would notice it even more. But if I did the way I suggested to him, then it was not popping up for some odd reason. But yeah, because some people just let it time out. Like, yeah, but I don't have time for that. So <laughs> when I'm done dictating, I just double tap to end dictation. Or my now my workaround is just doing the back gesture to back out of the key- keyboard completely. Because if I double tap, um, it won't. It will insert. The letter five for me unless i do explore by touch to find the microphone again and then double tap so mm. yeah it's a little bit of an annoying bug there. Up t5 instead of 10 4 isn't it <laughs> yeah i guess so uh the other thing oh, that i found my. slightly baffling was it told me there were some volume changes in that i oh, could hold yeah. my finger on the screen and press the volume to change accessibility because that's never been a thing before <laughs> it's like why why are you saying that's new well, the, what's new is that that's the only way to adjust the um, accessibility volume. So, well, at least that's what they're going for. Because before, if the screen reader was talking, you could adjust the volume and it would adjust the accessibility volume, even if you weren't touching the screen. But I think now you have to touch the screen. And why they're why they're doing it is to completely remove TalkBack from overriding those volume keys because so now you can use the volume keys for like taking photos in the camera app or if you're any other app that lets takes advantage of those keys now talkback won't override those and you'll be able to use them like they're intended like you can no longer (laughs) just talk back without touching the screen that would would make a lot more sense instead of telling me yeah it did anyway um yeah that makes sense i think it's probably the right thing to do as well I really um, like that too because <laughs> it frees us to use apps that would take advantage of that volume. Um, because goodness, I, I don't want to, uh, you know, if I don't want to use my volume, or rather, if I want to use my volume keys for doing something else, you know, like you use the app, the key mapper, and you want to use the, that volume mm-hmm. key. Some people like to use that to answer their calls or whatever. So if you have that app like that now it frees it to where you can now use those uh, type of functions so i think it's something that should have been there from the get-go if you ask me but uh uh it's never too late and we're glad it's here but maybe they, maybe they like addressed it yeah. uh, because they wanted to you know um fix bugs that devices that are not you know like samsung or google that are overseas that they're noticing you know from logs and stuff that i could be it too you never know yeah and for those who haven't realized what's happened, you're going to have a load of random photos you didn't know you were taking in your camera app when you thought you were adjusting talkback volume, and you were. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, it's not going to happen unless you have the camera app running. So That's what I mean, on. though. But if you are, then you're going to have a load of photos because you yeah. thought that you were going to adjust But you have volume. to actually, uh, you, you have to go enable that in the camera app. And then just finally on features, has anyone tried to find out whether editing is any easier. I mean, we, we talked about the spell checker, but are there other editing improvements or is that it? Is copying and pasting any easier or was it only spell I checker? I think you can yeah, do that for actions too. 
with all the actions, that. it makes things easier because uh, I can, um, for example, I could switch to the selection mode, and and once I'm in that selection mode, I could switch to either line granularity or word granularity. And once I've selected all that I want, I just hit that delete key or uh, copy or whatever if I wanted to do, uh, you know, mm-hmm. copy or, or cut it out. So I think it's a good thing in in general. And I think we'll be showing some of these things, um, you know, like John will be demonstrating some of these things in our highlights, the talk back highlights, and mm-hmm. um, maybe next week as well. So um, things to look forward to. Folks, that draws us to the end of the Android 13.1 new features, but uh, keep your ears peeled for uh, uh, John's uh, first episode of uh, Talkback Highlights.